and there's a lot of people groups. that have to work on themselves. I mean, when we there's see a lot people of people who sit in their the cottages world. in their homes and don't have an experience like others and think that it's well, you know, let me swipe my visa card and make a donation, but I don't live this experience. What are we doing to change the current circumstances? We just had a pope say he's not saying I'm sorry to indigenous Canadians when he said that in 2015. It is happening right now. I'm not saying it's it, got I, to change. I, yes, I, we forgive. I believe in Jesus. But why do are you others, attacking you me, Julie? You. Why no, no, are you no. attacking it, me? No, no, I totally get what you're saying, and I, I woo, have. Woo, woo, woo. I'm, Hold on, we live right, right now. Why are you attacking me? I'm not oh, attacking. The truth no. hurts. I didn't say anything to attack you, Jeannie Becker. I said nothing oh, about Jeannie Becker. No, no, I, I'm just saying you're. I, Did I, I say feel anything about Jeannie Becker? I just feel that you're speaking to me um, like I, I don't believe that. I no. totally get what so you're saying. Let me saying. tell you what you just said. I feel like. So whatever you're feeling, take it to the altar, because I'm not the one that's responsible for your feelings. Umbrella. She's up. She's up. Oh, level oh, shit you can't level. understand. What can't is understand. good, my people? We are live back again with another episode of the forecast so out in michigan a mentally ill brother by the name of kevin matthews was shot nine times by dearborn police so let's go back and see what led to this mentally ill brother being shot by the cops nine times it is a bold prediction that is shutting down Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. That, in fact, is the intent of a number of civil rights groups looking to protest a deadly shooting of an unarmed man at the hands of a Dearborn officer. Rob Maloney is covering that for us. And, Rob, the investigation into the shooting of Kevin Matthews continues. Yes, it does, Devin, and we're at the corner of Evergreen and Michigan Avenue because this is where the protest is going to start. The idea is to march from here down to the Dearborn Police Department about a block and a half, two blocks away, as a way to protest this shooting that happened just before Christmas. The shooting in the city of Detroit happened in an instant. It started as a foot chase in the city of Dearborn on Detroit's northwest border and left 35-year-old Detroiter Kevin Matthews dead from multiple gunshot wounds at the hands of a Dearborn police officer who was still unidentified. Eyewitness Ingrid Ellis called the scene blood curdling. All I heard was boom, 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 like 12 shots. And when all said and done, the guy's body is down at the fifth house down laying in a driveway. Detroit Police Chief James Craig, along with Dearborn Police Chief Ron Haddad, both said Matthews was wanted on misdemeanor warrant charges from Redford. They added that he was known to local businesses for thefts, and they say, to add to the controversy, that a struggle for the officer's weapon had an eyewitness. Chief Haddad said from the beginning, he stands behind his officer. The officer gave a pursuit on foot. Um, he ran for about a half a block. Uh, caught up with the gentleman in the backyard of a house. Uh, there appears to be a struggle that took place uh, uh, over the officer's gun. There is a witness that indicates there was a struggle, so we know that. Uh, we're also uh, looking for other forensic evidence uh, here at the location that will answer some questions, but it's still too soon to tell. They could have fought some other type of way, but he never runs from the police. He always go willingly whenever he did go to jail or anything. It just don't make sense. Just shoot him for what? Kill him for what? Eight times? For what? He's not a violent type person. You know what I'm saying? He's not that kind of person at all. Oh, I know, but they're saying that he struggled with the officer, though. He no. had gotten into some sort of physical no. altercation. That's not true. If he had got, they wanted him, he could have, he would have got in the car if that's what the problem was. Multiple groups, multiple people, we're just concerned. There have been several protests since the shooting, led by the National Action Network. Tonight's protest will include other groups such as Black Lives Matter and Take on Hate. Well, Rod, back to the investigation into the shooting. Where does that stand right now? What I've been told is that it is ongoing. It's going to be very slow. They're waiting some for some forensic evidence uh, that would lead to the, the uh, evidence as to whether there was a physical struggle for the gun. Now, the, we're told, and we were told at the time, that the police officer's uniform was ripped, that his, his uh, utility belt was pulled around. And so, therefore, the belief is that if they can find the DNA evidence there, it will give them the opportunity or at least help them make a determination as to what exactly happened in this struggle. So this brother Kevin Matthews was walking down the street when a cop who was already on another unrelated traffic stop saw this brother and decided to drop everything he was doing just to go try to stop this brother Kevin Matthews. 
Now, the police said this man was wanted because earlier that day, he got caught stealing a Red Bull from the store. So then the cops said when he tried to stop him, he disobeyed his orders. How dare this nigga disobey a white man's orders? But then they say he took off running. So then, according to the police story, I'm guessing he caught up with him at some point during this whole situation. Because then they say this brother ended up in a struggle with the cop. Which ended up with this brother Kevin Matthews standing over the cop, reaching for the cop's ammo that was on his belt. Which doesn't make sense because he was unarmed. He didn't have a gun. But according to the police, he was reaching for the ammo and the cop said, I thought he was going for the gun next. So then the cop was left with no other choice but to shoot this brother nine times. 200 protesters hit the streets of Dearborn tonight calling for action after a police officer shot and killed an unarmed wanted suspect. 7 Action News reporter Aaron Baskerville is live at Dearborn Police Headquarters with more on the protest. Aaron? Heather, police actually blocked off Michigan Avenue and some other streets around the police department as they marched here, those protesters, earlier tonight. It lasted about an hour or so. They demanded change. They also want that officer charged. No racist police! They marched down a blocked off Michigan Avenue in Dearborn, chanting and demanding answers in the name of 35-year-old Kevin Matthews. Matthews was unarmed when he was shot to death by a Dearborn police officer on December 23rd after a short foot chase. Investigators say there was a struggle over the officer's gun. That officer fired his weapon several times. Matthews had been wanted for misdemeanor warrants and for a theft earlier that day. What happens if this officer does not get charged? I, I don't want to think like that. I'm going to think positive right now, but it would be an injustice, I think, if the officer did not get charged. It would be an injustice. Some counter demonstrators faced the crowd in silence outside of the police department, standing in favor of these officers. I'm tired of PD getting nothing but bad press. Nobody ever talks about them saving lives and the good they do. Somebody needs to. We're here you're gonna move me. No, sister. Well, I'm talking to you. Face. I'm talking I'm to not you. your sister right now. Uh, At times, there was a back and forth between demonstrators on the same side. A small group, well after it was over, marched and chanted inside nearby Kroger, yelling derogatory things at officers. We need transparency. The family says there is no celebrating the new year until there's justice. Some feel the relationship with officers must change. If we don't patch it up now, it's going to blow. Protesters are now calling for a boycott of Dearborn until they get any change. Kevin Matthews, he was laid to rest on Saturday. This investigation is still ongoing. In order to justify killing this brother, they had to go out of their way to criminalize him. Now, mind you, all this brother did, allegedly, was steal a Red Bull, which is not punishable by death. This brother was unarmed. He did not have a gun on him. The police said he was wanted for drunk and disorderly, not even theft. But they still tried to bring up old charges that was dismissed. He beat those charges already. Those things had nothing to do with him being shot nine times, but they bring it up to try to justify killing him. But the problem is, they have video that contradicted their whole story. They did their best not to release this video, but it got out there. And the police were clearly lying about the struggle part. He was running away, not standing over top of the cop reaching for his ammo. But they hold our history against us to justify our murders. Meanwhile, they wouldn't hold it against the cop if he applied to get another job somewhere else. They love to talk about how we need to get over the past. But in order to justify killing one of us, that's the first thing they do is bring up the past. The prosecutor, Kim Worthy, justified the shooting and cleared these cops of all charges. She said because of laws for self-defense and laws for defense of others makes this case hard to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, I wonder if we use these self-defense laws and these defense of other laws to protect ourselves, would they still feel the same way? Or would it make it easier for them to say murder? But this prosecutor, Kim Worthy, also justified the shooting of an unarmed black woman another mentally ill sister, Janet Wilson. 
was shot five times by police. dollar lawsuit was just filed against the Dearborn Police Department today. It stems from the death of a 31-year-old woman shot to death by a Dearborn officer outside the Fairlane Mall. But now Detroit's Jonathan Carlson is live with that story for us. Jonathan? Stephen, good afternoon. We've got the lawsuit right here. It was filed on August 4th, and as you mentioned, the family of the victim wants 10 million bucks. The city of Dearborn and Officer James Wade are being sued for what happened on January 27th of this year. Chopper 7 was overhead in the aftermath. Janet Wilson, a 31-year-old African-American woman, was exiting Fairlane Mall when security deemed her suspicious and called police. What happened next remains in dispute. Wilson's family and attorney maintain she was unarmed and remained in her car as officers fired on her. Other witnesses said she fled the scene. Regardless, it ended with Wilson being fatally shot. Her niece reacting shortly after. Who's policing the police? Mm. They gunned my auntie down. She didn't have a weapon. The suit also claims the Dearborn Police Department has refused to hand over dash cam footage of the incident. This was the second fatal officer involved shooting involving Dearborn Police during that time, both now resulting in lawsuits. And the Dearborn Police Department has declined to comment on this. Now, the police were trying to stop the sister because of a disturbance in the mall. Now, this sister was unarmed, but she was running away. So then, in order to stop her, Officer James Wade decides to shoot her five times. Then, as she was bleeding out on the ground, dying, that's when they decided to talk to her and ask her what her name was. Now, even though they cleared him of all the charges, and they didn't fire him, they did give him a warning and suspended him because he endangered himself and other cops. He literally shot towards the other cops who was closer than him just to shoot this woman. They also waited as long as they could before the video got out. But even so, they still called it self-defense. And this prosecutor, Kim Worthy, who is a black woman herself, goes out of the way to keep innocent black men in jail. A brother named Devontae Sanford, who was locked up for a crime somebody else confessed to, but she fought and filed motions all the way up to the Supreme Court to keep this brother locked up. And the Supreme Court sided with her. They said actual innocence was not a valid reason to withdraw a guilty plea. So this brother Devontae Sanford had to remain in prison for another two years for crimes that somebody else confessed to. But this is the same state that justified DeMond Grimes, a 15-year-old run off the road by the cops and killed. And then after the cop Mark Besner killed him, then he went on a rant about him, talking about he ain't 15, that's a grown-ass man. 
talking about, I don't got no sympathy. If you want to be grown, you got to deal with it. So I guess according to him, if you're grown, you can be run off the road by the police and killed. But this prosecutor, Kim Worthy, who was the first black woman in this county to be the prosecutor, who has been there for a long time and supported by the Democratic Party, they don't say anything to her. They don't go after her. But people like Aramis Ayala, Florida's first state attorney, trying to get rid of the death penalty based off facts, they go after her and try to take her job the first year. And the Supreme Court decided to rule against her. They've been going after Baltimore state attorney, Marilyn Mosby, because she spoke up about Freddie Gray. The courts ruled against her. Judge Olu Stevens, they went after him. They tried to take his job away because he wouldn't let a black defendant have an all-white jury. And the courts ruled against him. He had to take a deal. But this prosecutor, Kim Worthy, who actively fought to keep an innocent black man in jail, knowing he was innocent, and the courts ruled in her favor. But this is why we need to focus on our own business, our own politics, our local officials in charge of our local tax dollars, the people in charge of our local schools and who educates our children, who's in charge of the local laws, who hires the local police chief. And voting doesn't work if we don't have candidates who are looking out for our best interests. And until we have candidates that push our agenda, then voting is useless. But that's why it's important for us to build our own institutions. Because no matter what we do, they're going to criminalize it. And no matter what they do, they're going to justify it. Okay, run, please. Hey, it's Ashley. What's up? Hey, are there any are there any cars in the Sally Court right now? Um, yes, there's one. Uh, can we have whoever's car that is move it? Uh, Horniak and I are coming in with the two cars that have possibly the video from Hampton's incident, and OJ wants them pulled into the Sally Court, okay. so they can be downloaded immediately. All right. Uh, I need the officer who moved. Uh, Officer Hampton vehicle from the scene, uh, if you can respond uh, down to the crime scene here. Which officer uh, took Tack 1's vehicle? Officer Baker, I'm standing with Tack 1's vehicle, but I don't think it's been moved. Okay, are you still at the scene then? Affirmative. 3 5, okay. Yeah, three five prior to him, uh, someone moved out of the vehicle over to the middle of the street. I just need to know if the officer has moved it. Negative, he's standing by at the same location with that. Dear one police sergeant Ball, can I help you? Hi, this is Officer Kosha from Detroit Police Crime Intel Unit. How are you doing? Good. Uh, my captain was actually just calling, or wanted me to call to see if you guys can give us any information. Were you guys here on a, uh, was it just like a police chase, or was it executing a search warrant, or no, anything was, like that? No, it was just, uh, he, this guy was a suspect in a, yesterday for some bullshit call at the gas station right at Tireman in Wyoming, or Tireman in Greenfield, where he, I think he stole some stuff, and he ran before we got there yesterday. The officer had dealt with him before and knew him, Oh, okay. and uh, he was just approaching him. Right there at Tireman. Uh, and then he took off running? Uh, yeah, the the specifics of what happened after that I don't yeah. know yet. Okay. All right, yeah, because we were like, we didn't hear like a chase come out or anything. Nope. So it all was of a all, he called this. out that he was approaching someone on foot, and uh, the next call yeah. was that there, he had someone down. Tag one, show me approaching one on foot on Tireman and Whitcomb. Tag <laughs> one. <laughs> Oh, green. Check one, you scan, sir. Check one, priority shot, please. Close my job. I'm okay. Okay, check one, shot fired. 19, you okay? Suspect is both of them, check one. Okay. 19, sir, rescue the end of the floor, right? Check one, 8-0. 8-0, 8-0. 
your own wig come in the uh, driveway, the garage. Where do we got shots fired at? Twenty-one in Whitcomb. One of our guys involved? Tech one. Okay, thanks. Three six, we are code green. You just pull everybody down. Okay, code green. All units go easy. Hey, we got me uh, one block to the east in the back with a camera. We got to get someone over there. One block to the east. With Kim Worthy, we met with some of her assistants, including Molly Kettler, and it indicated that they didn't believe they could uh, charge the officer and get a conviction, and that's why they made the decision that they made. Um, there wasn't a lot of discussion of the specifics, but there was some discussion of evidence, and uh, you know that's their decision. We're going to have to live live with it and move forward. It's, so, I mean, they discussed the evidence. What, what did they exactly say about the evidence? Um, they discussed that uh, the, from the time period where Kevin was being chased by the officer from Dearborn to the time of his death was a, a short expanse of time. There was no discussion about uh, the, the actual shooting. There was no discussion about the nine bullets to his, to his body, nine uh, bullets shot into his body. Uh, but that, that there was in fact a struggle and that the officer likely was going to suggest he was in self-defense. No mention of witnesses to the struggle? Um, I have had conversations with witnesses um, regarding that there was in fact a struggle, but I also have had contact with witnesses myself where the last words stated before Kevin Matthews were, was shot and killed was Kevin Matthews saying, stop it, stop it and then the bullets. So really your only recourse now is going to be financial through civil means? Yes, and I'm, we're meeting this afternoon in the court on that issue. Did you have a chance to talk to your clients? What are, what are they saying right now? Well, they're, you know, they're, very, you know, they're very unhappy. They're unhappy with the delay of time that's taken. Uh, in two days is the year anniversary of Kevin's death, not an anniversary, so to speak, but 12 months. Um, you know, the prosecutor is a busy, it's a busy office. We understand that, but um, just got to move forward. Well, Stephen, first things first, the video everyone is about to see is not appropriate for small children. So on the off chance that someone may have children in front of the TV right now, please have them leave the room. Okay, so this shooting occurred last year. Dearborn police pursuing Janet Wilson. Here it is. Dashcam video shows police in pursuit of Janet Wilson near Fairlane Mall last year. Police say they were responding to a report of a mentally ill woman trying to run over mall security in the parking lot. Wilson stops out of frame of the dash cam in the area of Southfield and Hubbard. You can hear officers commanding her to get out of the car. Seconds later, the car moves forward. Dearborn Police Corporal James Wade III fires four shots while backing away. Wade holsters his gun and calls for help. <laughs> Most of the rounds hit Wilson in the chest. She's semi-conscious when police approach. Stay with us. Stay with us. Stay with us. Get, get some pressure on that. Stay with us, man. Man, stay with us. A distraught Wade is reassured by a fellow officer. Hey, hey you did what you had to do. You did exactly what you had to do. Stay with us, man. Man, what's your name? What's your name, ma'am? What's your name? Yeah, stay with us. Wade was cleared of any wrongdoing. A call to Dearborn's police chief has not been returned this evening. Wilson's attorneys also deciding not to comment at this time. With that breaking news now on the prosecutor's story in the case of Devontae Sanford, he became a free man yesterday after serving eight years in prison on a wrongful conviction. Prosecutor Kim Worthy just spoke to reporters. Seven Action News reporter Anu Prakash is live downtown to tell us why the prosecutor is standing by her decision in the case. Anu. 
Well, Joanne, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy says that it was just as of May 20th of this year that she says she got information that called into question the conviction of Devontae Sanford. Now, he was just 14 when he was arrested and later confessed and pled guilty to four murders at a Detroit drug house on Runyon Street. Now, almost nine years later, his conviction was vacated and he was released yesterday following an independent investigation done by Michigan State Police. Now, supporters of Devontae have long questioned why Vincent Smothers, a professional hitman who confessed to the murders, was never charged. In a lengthy presentation this morning, the prosecutor laid out the evidence that she said did not point to Vincent Smothers at the time. She said she acted quickly after MSP found problems with the DPD police investigation into the murders, and she was pressed on why Vincent Smothers couldn't have been charged years ago instead of Devante. This is not a case where, as I said before, and I'm going to end on this, this is not a case where these allegations were made, they weren't followed up. I don't know what kind of, I, maybe it wasn't done to your satisfaction, but we did everything that we could do to follow up from those confessions. And then we had, again, the two years plus long hearing where the defense, as well as the prosecution, had an opportunity to call witnesses. They chose not to. They chose not to deal with, for whatever reason, that's something you have to ask them, on issues that get to the heart of some of the questions that you're talking about. Now, one piece of evidence that Worthy said that they relied on was testimony from then DPD Deputy Chief James Tolbert, who said this drawing of the crime scene was done by Devontae Sanford on a blank piece of paper. Well, now we've learned that during the recent MSP investigation and an interview of then DPD Deputy Chief James Tolbert, he admitted to drawing the house and that Devontae just drew the bodies. And because of that, we're told now there is a warrant request being reviewed for James Tolbert for a perjury charge. Bottom no matter how many times she was challenged on her handling of this case, Kim Worthy insists that her office was not running rogue and trying to railroad Devontae Sanford. As for the Runyon Street murders, at this point, her office is also reviewing a warrant request to charge Vincent Smothers as well as another man. It'll be interesting to see what Devontae Sanford's family and his attorneys have to say because we're expecting to hear from them later on this afternoon. Tony, give us priority. Chasing an ATV. Keystone Rossini from uh, Reno. It's a red uh, quad, black male, black shirt. Coming up to Regent. DPD's coming right at him. <laughs> Through Regent. He flipped, flipped. Yep. All right, crash. Moments before this ATV slammed into the back of a parked truck, it was being chased by Michigan State Police, their bumpers just feet apart. Uh, he flipped, flipped. Yep. All right, crash. We're seeing crash. After the crash, as we cut to a different angle, you'll notice the state troopers' overhead lights appear to be off. Start EMS. EMS will be on the way. Based on the time code we've added, 24 seconds elapsed before the first flash of lights. That coincides with the first Detroit police officers arriving. Okay, he's got a pulse and he's breathing. He's unconscious. Clear. Clear. <laughs> Two more Detroit police officers approach. Oh nine, he slowed down. We tased him and he crashed out. Those words come from Mark Bessner. He's the trooper accused of firing his taser from a moving vehicle. It's a violation of department policy. Heavy MS stepping up. EMS is on the quick. Oh, there you go from MSP. If you could just maybe have a unit or two make it there for moral support. 